tutorial starts with a song, <laughs> but it's only a few seconds long. <laughs> Let's get started with animation. What you see here is a piece of art. I really think it would suit a museum quite well. Of course it's in 3D, uh, in a 3D package on a computer only, but of course you can transfer this idea into the so-called real world, or you use it as an installation in a museum or in virtual reality. Maya can easily render out virtual reality files or stereo files, for example. Well, when you, it comes to artistic things, to, to art, it's always a mixture between the tools and inspiration. And in my case, I played around with shrink wrap. Shrinking means make things smaller, and to wrap means, well, I wrap my hands around an apple. And shrink wrap does exactly what it says, and I played with that tool, and all of a sudden, this idea came to my head, and I placed a cylinder around this character and used shrink wrap in order to shrink it towards him. Anyway, the basic usage of this tool is this you create an object, or you have an object of a pretty low polygon density like this bust here, this head. And you want to use certain parts uh, with a high higher density. Of course you can select those parts and then smooth them out or do other things with the polygon mesh tools, but you can also use shrink wrap. So you place a high polygon structure in that head and then you apply the shrink wrap command. There's a whole section further down in the deformer part, in the, in the long deformer menu, which you find under modeling and animation in Maya. Uh, we don't talk about this. We talk about the upper part, and uh, the upper part has several options, and uh, they are not really... Well, I always play around with them, and uh, I think some have the same effect and others don't. So in this case, you select the to be deformed object and with a shift key the target and then you go to the deform menu for shrink wrap and in this case the vertex normals are what we need. You don't see the effect until you actually hide the original and um, then you can move the object which you've just well projected on that surface from the inside and because of history, it uh, remembers where it came from and you can animate this and place it in other places. So this is the first practical usage of shrink wrap to create a high polygon structure with the shrink wrap command from a surface which is low polygon. And here you can see it in a rendered version I think it looks very cool. There's only one light in the scene, uh, an area light. And um, I animated the motion of the bust so just slightly. It doesn't have a skeleton or anything in there. But the main thing I animated was uh, the shrink wrap deformer. And uh, it looks quite nice. And uh, I even like the artifacts. By the way, uh, there's a slight distance now of the shrink wrap surface. Uh, that's why it looks so 3D-ish. The other way around is this. You have a high polygon structure like this woman and you put a low polygon structure like this sphere into her head or into some other parts of her body. It doesn't work with nerves. It, you need polygons for this command. Now I select the woman. I have selected the sphere before and now I go back to animation or whatever or modeling and under deformers I find the shrink wrap deformer I choose the vertex normals again and I have my effect now I hide the original character and this is what I see I have to reverse the surface in order to see it properly but you can see that it's basically this girl this woman we've just seen in a very rough but still 
recognizable structure. Low polygon. And of course you can animate it and move it around. It even has an effect when you lower that sphere, it once was a sphere, it has, well, it resembles her body. This is where you change the distance, but I think it looks best in this case when it's really on the face. I reverse the distance to zero. Here is another shrink wrap example, a simple polygon car and a high polygon plane. And the plane can be shrink wrapped, well, the closest point, for example, onto that car. You see a quite a good representation of parts of the roof of that car. High polygon, that's the difference toward inner object. That's what I did. In a rendered version, this can look quite nice. This is rendering in sort of real time. So I animated the shrink wrap surface again, like in the bust example before. Now I introduce a light which starts shining at the front of the car while that structure finds its way somewhere else to the, to the front. This looks a little bit like N-cloth, but it is not N-cloth. i show you the difference in just a second. Here I rotate the car just to show you that you can actually, with a high polygon structure falling onto, being shrink-wrapped, sorry, and it's not falling onto the car, it's being shrink-wrapped around the parts of the car, you can actually see the wheels. And I play with different options of the shrink-wrap deformer now. Some produce the same results, others produce slightly different results. And you have a representation of the wheels and the structure of that car from the side. So I don't know if you really want to use this for retopologizing or maybe just, just to create a new skin for the previous object. Now end cloth is totally different. This is an end cloth example. It uh, resembles the structure of the car slightly, but it basically behaves like cloth and uh, it falls down in a real simulation like you see here. And here I show you a rendered version. It has anticipation. That means the car moves slightly and slowly back now, and then it waits and then it shoots off. Let's have a look again. This is cloth. This is not shrink wrap. It's a much more modern tool. Shrink wrap has been around for quite a while. If you're interested in end cloth, well, I did several tutorials about it. This is one of them. Link is in the description, of course. Now here is that man in a glass cage. It's a shrink wrap object, which I shaded with a glass shader. AI standard shader from Arnold and I converted it into glass with a certain refraction. There are two lights in the scene. One light only deals with a glass. And uh, in order to see glass in a nice way or re highly re reflected uh, surfaces in a good way, you need uh, an HDRI image which wraps around the whole scene. And I did tutorials about that as well. This one with the apple is one of them. Well, when I found this combination between that character from the render people, by the way, it's built into Maya as well. You find it in the content browser. I render it from several perspectives. I render an animation like this and uh, like the one before. And then I think this is kind of perfect. Need I, do I need more light in order to illustrate the message of this image better or not? He looks a little bit like he was uh, going to marry someone with a veil. And on the other side, he looks like a man who is captured in glass. Not frozen, still alive, or very much alive really, but in that glass cage. Of course, you can, if you're interested in this, uh, just render the glass only. 
just hide the character. And here you again see the quite amazing reflections. This is a very simple image which I wrapped around the whole scene and um, uh, it does a, a very nice job. Now the final question, can we animate that character, walk for example, and still have the shrink wrap wrap around him? Well, sort of. But I think this bent, I used a bent deformer for uh, the character here, looks quite promising. To wrap this up, the tools are not really interesting. You need to refine the tools and then you find things which really can look quite beautiful and interesting and challenging. And if you see only this single image, you ask yourself, what is this about? What happened to him? What is the whole story? Have a nice day.